I'd go on the Ouija board for the show and I'm doing it with the guy who lived in the house. And I'm like, have we ever met? And it said, yes. And I was like, what did you try to do to me? And it said, it spelled out kill. And I was like, okay, so this is what I dealt with before. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we have a special guest, um, a very um, interesting, you know, podcast today. Special guest, as I just said again, and um, I'm gonna let him introduce yourself. But also, we got my boy Trey here with me. What's up, and, guys? Um, it's gonna be very interesting for y'all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My name is Jay Wosley. Uh, I am probably best known from Ghost Adventures. Uh, formerly on the Travel Channel and Discovery Plus, but now we are moving to the actual Discovery Channel. Okay. Nice. Starting May 31st. Um, yeah, so that's kind of my main, my main, my life, my, uh, the past 13 years, chasing ghosts. <laughs> it's, it's definitely interesting. <laughs> uh, it's a definitely interesting job. How, how did you get into it? Uh, so it's kind of a crazy story. So originally, like, it's kind of weird. It's one of those things where like things happen for a reason, you know. I was a kid. I was like into weird, creepy stuff as a kid, and you know, I would go out in the woods, and I have like so many weird little ghost stories growing up, just uh, outside of Philly in New Jersey, uh, which is just scary on its own. But uh, <laughs> uh, you know, so then you know, as after high school, I got into film production, so I'd work camera, sound, doing things like that. Uh, and you meet people, and you build up your career, and you start working for a while. And then fast forward, uh, one day I got a call. It was just like, hey, we got a gig for you. Uh, it was just a gig. Uh, they wanted a sound guy mm -hmm. uh, to fly out to Vegas. Uh, I flew out to Vegas, drove out four hours out in the middle of the desert to a town called Goldfield, yeah. uh, where there's massive abandoned hotel was. And I filmed the first episode of Ghost Adventures just as a sound guy. Um, that was it. And then after that, like, it was such a small crew. Like, we don't, and even today, like, we, you know, we have a few extra people, but it's yeah. such, like, we do everything ourselves. So I'm on the show, but I'm also a cinematographer of the show. Mm -hmm. So I'm, like, running back and forth. And um, being such a small group, we became good friends. And then over time, I started, like, throwing out ideas. Like, oh, you could do this. Like, do you ever think about analyzing this this way yeah. or that? And then uh, our host, Zach, was like, oh, it was like, you should do that. Yeah. So you start bringing me on camera to do like experiments and analysis, things like that. And it's just, it's been a constant evolution and yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wild ride, huh? Oh yeah. <sighs> I'm a little, <laughs> I love watching scary movies, but to actually be in the room and actually, you know, speak to you as someone that goes out there and find them, um, what, what kind of like drives you or what, what makes you decide to continue on? I mean, there's plenty of times where I think like, all right, that's enough. Like, what at one, two, like what else could there be? Like yeah. I've seen things lift off the ground, go flying. I've been touched, I've been dragged, I've been scratched. I've had scratches appear on me. I've seen exorcisms, I've seen possessions, I've seen all kinds of different paranormal activity. Yeah. So in my mind, it's like, what else could there be? And then all of a sudden, we'll just have an experience that just Something like, else oh, comes like up. where does that come from? That's like, why is that? And I think it's that drive of the unknown. Like, mm -hmm. What is all this? Why does it happen? How does it keep happening? Like, I, you know, I like to think I'm a scientist, like yeah. deep down inside. I think when I was a kid, I always wanted to be. So it's like that drive to be like, what is this? What does it mean? You know, and, and I get to explore it week after week. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely something that I, don't think I could go out and do. Um, it's 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 just the the creepiness of death and mm. just the the stuff that is, is all around. Like you said, the unknown, man. Mm. It's it's it scares a lot of people. It's, yeah, it's weird. It's kind of like there's a scary level, but there's also like a humbling level. Mm -hmm. And I've had enough experiences. Like I don't know what it all is, but I know there's more to life than this. Yeah. And then in a weird way, that's also comforting. Yeah. Because I know like this just isn't it. Like we don't just die and that's 100% it. Right. You know, like there's more to it, you know. How do you handle like going into situations like that are intense and like are kind of like, well, I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, it's tough too because like when we go into these places, and I think we've been doing it for so long now where like we kind of know what works. We know how to open ourselves up. And that's scary because you got to open yourselves up to yeah. it. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, because we want the evidence, we want mm -hmm. the experience. 
but I think it's also then learning to be able to close yourself off yeah. when you got to go home and like leave work at work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want to bring that work home with you. Right, and that... it did, and it has. It's come home to me a few times, and like over the years, though, I've learned to kind of like you know do my own thing to kind of shake it off and leave it there, and yeah. you know, thankfully, knock on wood, where yeah. somewhere is. But like, it's it's been good now, you know. Yeah. Like I've learned to be able to, you know, and that's the thing too. Like we have another show that we started doing. Uh, oh. That's Digsby. Um, <laughs> story. So we started doing another show too where uh, it's called Ghost Adventures House Calls where we actually go to people's individual homes and try to help them. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's great. Like with our experience, we've learned to kind of what works and what doesn't. So we like, you know, we're now trying to like actually help people that have some problems too. That's interesting. Um, how obviously you've been to a few locations where, you know, it's haunted things that's been going on or activity. Um, how do you, have you ever had to deal with one following you home and, you know, obviously oh, yeah. talking about how you shake it? How do you like, mm -hmm. how do you defeat it? You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's definitely be... like, there's been some, uh, actually, I don't want to scare you too, but outside of Dallas, I don't know if you know a town called Denton. It's like just yeah. north oh, of Dallas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like a Denton Highway that goes through oh, okay. Texas, but no, I'm, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> yeah, so I, mean, I don't stay there, which is a good thing. <laughs> right. But yeah. So there's a place out there called Goatman's Bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the most terrifying places I've ever been. Uh, I was married at the time. Uh, my wife at the time was there. She got affected. Uh, that came home with her. Kind of, she went down a dark path for a while. And she couldn't shake it. Uh, thankfully, she eventually did, but it, you know, ultimately kind of led to a divorce mm -hmm. and splitting up. But that's when it kind of really hit home where I was like, man, this stuff really, yeah. like, it's real. Like, yeah. you know, this isn't just a TV show. Like, right. and that's a lot of people. They're like, oh, it's just a TV show. Yeah, a lot like, of people think, you know, like, you know, even my dad, when I go home, he's like straight lace, like electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't believe a thing. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, dad, that means like, like, you think I'm that good of an actor? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. like, I can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> And that is, that is why. Yeah, and like I, I wish it would make sleeping easier. You know, the, you know, everything we've gone through, and all of us, not just me, but like, you know, and I feel like the four of us on the show, like it's almost like I've had friends that are in the military, and we've kind of like, and I'm not even saying close to what they do, but yeah. there's like this weird like trauma bond too that you like go through this, and yeah. you know, kind of seeing everybody go through the different things in their lives, and you know, like I said earlier, thankfully I'm at a point now where like it's been good for years, and kind of learned how to manage it <laughs> so you, you've been doing this for 13 years mm -hmm. how did you um you know how did the team come about with ghost adventures how did yeah. everybody yeah so originally uh uh it was the three guys originally uh they met in vegas uh and they just had an idea they wanted to do a documentary like around vegas there's so many ghost towns yeah and, like i'll i'll send you a bunch you'll have okay. fun just driving you know two hours three hours four hours however far you want there's so many cool little ghost towns mm -hmm. And it was, you know, it's just like that old Wild West yeah. kind of vibe. Uh, so they went out and they did a documentary. Uh, they went to that place called Goldfield. Uh, that was my first episode. Not when they went, but later on it was a return. Um, and they got amazing evidence. They caught a brick, like famously, like flying through the air by itself. Uh, so then they took the documentary and there were just some guys that just like just out of college, made a documentary, started shopping it around. I think Sci-Fi bought it originally. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, let's do a show with it. And then kind of went around and then eventually Travel Channel got it. And it started airing in 2008. Yeah. And then I when came you, on 2010. <laughs> when you travel across the country, do you see a difference in things that you see or feel from the West Coast versus the East Coast, just yeah. being the history? Oh, 100%. I mean, yeah. history is key, like to mm -hmm. me, like, you know, there's just so many layers of it. Yeah. Uh, out West, there's like, you know, it's like just the thing, especially Vegas. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of stories, you know, it's a lot. You know, a building's 20 year old mm -hmm. and they're like, no, that's too old. Let's knock it down and build something new, you know. Uh, but like, there's just something about like older buildings and even going internationally, you go to Europe, those oh, things, yeah. like we think like, oh, even the East Coast, like, oh, the 1800s, that's old. You go over to Europe and it's like, you know, thousands of years old. It's crazy. Have you guys shot uh, on location um, overseas? Yeah, we've done a bunch of episodes in Romania. Uh, we've done some in England, Ireland. Romania always comes up as like a haunted yeah. place. I always yeah. hear someone say Romania. Right. Well, it's like it's the the myth of Dracula is like their big thing. Which in Romania, he's actually like a hero. Like he's like. You know, he's not as painted as much of like a scary villain kind of character. That must but. be the one from Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, or, uh, <laughs> the states. Right. <laughs> um, so, like to do this, you know, obviously 
traveling and seeing mm -hmm. ghosts. Um, do you gotta have some type of faith, or you like? Do you have like a religion you kind of study or practice, uh, or how, like what's your yeah. thought process? With yeah. so, obviously I mean, there's ghosts, and oh, now yeah. <laughs> now that you say there are actually ghosts out here, there definitely got to be aliens here. So it's like oh yeah, definitely I got, I got some good people. alien stories too. But uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean religious wise, I you know never grew up like you know my parents weren't like you know I wasn't like had to go to church every week or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but I was a kid, I was like kind of a nerd like yeah. I studied everything like I studied Christianity I studied Buddhism I studied Taoism I studied uh you know Islam Muslim like I just like wanted to learn all of it and then then I kind of like I think now I kind of took elements from everything and kind of was like and kind of formed my own spirituality yeah. thought pattern you know um but not necessarily like defining to one specific yeah. you know thing and I think that's it and I think like afterwards like you were saying earlier about like how to shake off that like mm. negative energy. And I tell people like some people, like if you are religious, like, and you want like pray, do what you need, go to church, do that. Like if that's what helps you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go out in nature. If you just want to like hike, like reconnect, ground yourself, like yeah. find, surround yourself with positivity, like play with your kids, you know, have good times with your family, mm -hmm. like make art, do whatever it is that makes you happy and just engulf yourself in that. Yeah. Not that I'm nervous, but it definitely <laughs> it freaks me out a little bit. Yeah. But um, what, uh, like, exorcism and stuff, have you ever seen or ever seen somebody, like, kind of... You see it in the movies, and obviously we don't think it's true, but, you know, there's always a story to a movie, and there's got to be some type of truth to yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, there's... The movies definitely, like, exaggerate a little <laughs> bit, you know? It's, it's you know... But uh, I've definitely... I've witnessed some exorcisms and some possessions, uh... Uh, we did one in uh, Gary, Indiana. Uh, we made a documentary called The Demon House. Uh -huh. uh, it wasn't a show, it was like a standalone movie. Uh, and with that, we spent a few years going to this house in Gary, Indiana that was like famously haunted. And uh, we found a woman who used to live there. And then she was like, oh, can I bring my kids to show her the old house? We're like, all right, like, you know what's going on here, right? And she's like, yeah, it's fine. So they come over, we have footage, like it's all in the documentary, like the kids start acting weird, they leave, the next day the mom calls in a frantic that her daughter tried to kill herself and like totally lost herself. Uh, so and then we arranged for her to get an exorcism. Uh, and it wasn't like too dramatic, like we yeah. brought her to the church, but she like, you could, there's a moment where you can almost like sense that it left, like she's like all tense and then there's just a moment where she just like kind of goes limp and you just, and she was cool after that. Um, another real quick exorcism story of that like you know and the thing is too like we did a home i forget where it was but it was this this guy that was just having so much trouble there you know they thought it was the house but we kind of through our interviews realized like it's the guy like it's around him that's like this haunting is based upon um so we brought in an exorcist that we worked with before to come in and do an exorcist thing is when you do homes sometimes you never know like are these people putting it on like right. you know and like as investigators we have to go in open-minded like and yeah. try to like you know figure it out so with this guy you know he was kind of more like that uh, like yeah. like speaking in tongues like really intense so we have the he was a bishop and he starts the exorcism and he, he's like doing the cross and the guy's just like uh, like freaking out like almost movie level yeah. which was insane but also my brain was like okay like yeah is this it's, guy playing it up like yeah so what we did off camera, uh, the guy had no idea. We took, the uh, bishop went over and he made holy water. He blessed this cup of water uh, and we just had it there. The guy never knew, no one else knew except for us that he made this holy water. Uh, the guy's like freaking out. He's just, like snot, like all like, like, and we're like, and then his wife's like crying. She's like, honey, like, like just drink. And we're like, oh, here, we'll get him a glass of water. And we're like, here you go, here's a glass of water. He doesn't know it's the holy water. Yeah. As soon as he takes a sip, he's like, Wah! he just spits and he starts puking like hardcore. And he's like, that's burning my mouth. And like, he did not know that we that it was made into holy water, but he had a full on reaction to it. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, that's like, this guy's legit. Like, this guy's wow. going through it. <laughs> so, yeah, there it is. I don't know. Feeling you hearing these stories is like. I kind of want to go and experience it for myself. Just so. Yeah, I mean, know. it's it's a rush, man. Like. That's the thing, like, I could never go skydiving, but yeah. I get it. What? I can't, I can't do it. Like, I can't, but I get it. I get that rush, I the throb, you know, that drive, that adrenaline rush. Yeah. 
I would, well, I would ask you, is there places we can go where it's ghost friendly versus, you know, people that's trying to like take over <laughs> right, your trying body, to get you. you know what I mean? I mean, yeah, there's like, there's happy hauntings. I mean, we mm -hmm. tend to focus more on the dark. Um, it's just kind of the way we went. I don't mm -hmm. know. It just kind of. So the, the dark energy, is that like maybe people were murdered or they have bad, uh, that's all just the dark as comes yeah, from exactly. the bad. Okay, and like the way you. I kind of like if like on a scientific level how i would like relate to it is like you know if we're all made up of energy and like someone was murdered in this house in this room that's such an intense level of energy that's put out into that room so there's a whole thing called the stone tape theory where like organic surfaces like wood and rock things like that can actually absorb that energy you know and then we come in under the right circumstances under the right variables with the right equipment with the right mindset too like and we can actually pick up on that energy that's still there yeah and that's yeah like just to loop that in like we call that like a uh, residual energy basically like there's kind of two things that we like break it in hauntings like that would be residual where it's like energy that's just there yeah. but then we'll like have different devices and we'll get communication back we're like we ask questions and we get direct responses mm -hmm. and in that we call intelligent you know basically an intelligent haunting and that is still blows my mind where like you know, like I can, from my science mind, I can make sense. The energy lingers, it's there, you feel it. But like when you can actually interact and communicate yeah, with get something, like a voice that's or when it still like is that. like, you know, that's what it, like, all right, I got to figure that out. Have you figured it out? No, and like, <laughs> honestly, I don't, think, I don't think I ever will. And I never will say I will. Even like I've had moments where I'm like, all right, I think it's this, I think mm -hmm. it's that. But like, I'm not one to say, you yeah, know, I, I think it's, it's, it's always an evolving yeah. process. Um, is, is the... Um, like the spears, is it usually because something tragic has happened or or sometimes they just appear, you know what I mean? So how? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think the tragedy, like it's a stronger presence because it's just like that output of strong energy. Uh, but we've had stuff like, we've been to like purely like happy where it's like, oh, just someone died that was a friend or, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it got dark out of nowhere. We're like, that's what's weird. And then we go to places and we're interviewing and we find out like, oh yeah, like, you know, a few years ago, these kids, like, when it was yeah. abandoned, broke in, and they did the Ouija board in here, or they, like, did rituals, and, like, I think a lot of people, you know, and I think it's the thing, like, kids are going to do what kids do, and yeah. they play around, but, like, even if they're just playing around, like, they're still, the, they're still yeah. doing things, and even if they do it wrong, they're still, like, opening up stuff, and, yeah. you yeah. know. So, yeah, so spare is just not naturally there. It's got to be something to create. Like, sometimes to, it's brought to, to there, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I think it's a mix. Sometimes there's things there, but then there's also things that are, like, you know, I guess the term would be, like, summoning, you know, yeah. like, it's brought yeah. there in some way. Is that, that's kind of like what the Ouija board does, kind of just yeah, opens Ouija up boards. gates to I mean, things. I mean, argumentatively, like, even the things we do, like, I think just opening up communication, mm -hmm. like... You know, like a lot of people are like Ouija boards, like the famous, like, oh, I don't want to touch that. But like, there's no difference than like sitting in a room with a recorder and be like, is anyone here? Mm -hmm. And you play it back and you hear a voice saying, yeah, I'm here or something like that. Oh, man. You know, but that it's still, crazy. you're still opening up that conversation. Yeah. You're like reaching into that yeah. other world, you know, and that was like one of the things with the intelligent kind of hauntings is like that, like. You know, there's the theory of like everything that's happened and will happen and has like it's all happening at the same time. Like time is like an illusion and it's all in one time. And like, you know, under certain areas, like I don't know if it's like geographically or whatever it is, but like there's like overlaps and you can almost see like we did uh, this house in Connecticut or, Connecticut or Rhode Island. It, but it, it was the original Conjuring house that inspired oh, the Conjuring oh, movies. That's my show. That's my movie. Yeah. <laughs> And that place like, dream is crazy. That's a crazy. Yeah, thing. that one was wild. And we interviewed one of the kids that was like living in the house, like, and her mom was the one that was mm -hmm. possessed, like, and they based the movie on and everything. And she was saying, we're like, well, what do you think it all was? And the mom got to a point where she realized that she would see like the old school family, like sitting at the dining room table eating. Like it was almost like the two worlds. There was like a whole like in time, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And like, she was able to see them and then they could see her at times. And that's why like at first, you first experience that, you would go crazy, yeah. you know? And while we were there, uh, I did a thing to attempt to open a portal in the basement of the Conjuring house. And so I did that. And then uh, the other two, two of the guys were upstairs like investigating the rest of the house. So I do that, I go upstairs to try to meet up with them. The house was empty. From my perspective, I walked around that house for hours, couldn't find a single person. It was like I was in another building 
it was the most trippy, surreal thing I've probably ever experienced. And I'm yelling, I'm like, where are you guys at? Like, you know, and all of a sudden I was just like, I don't know like where they went, what's going on. And all of a sudden they just walk in from a room. I just looked in and they're like, you all right? What's going on? I'm like, wow. I've been searching for you guys for hours. We're like, yeah, we've been here. Where have you been? And, yeah. wow. and I still have no idea like what it was, but like, it sounds crazy, but like, I think I felt an experience like kind of what she was describing. That, yeah, like, kind of that, slipped through a portal. That crossover of like, you know. <laughs> I wonder if that's, that's like what our energy does, like crosses yeah. over, yeah. you know, or something right. like that. That's probably, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so how do you have like, so obviously those um, hunters or adventures is what you yeah. do for work. Hmm? Like, do, what do you do for fun? You know, yeah. obviously you were married <laughs> before. Like, how do yeah. you, you know, yeah, is it hard I mean, to find uh, friends or is it hard to like <laughs> pick out, you know, explain right? to people what you do and then yeah. they're like, oh, no. Right. I mean, it's kind of both. I think, you know, we have an amazing fan base that's been with us. And I think, yeah. I think everybody has an interest. Like mm -hmm. you might be terrified and you don't want to deal with it, but everybody's interested in it somewhat. Yeah, you know, yeah. we all want to know what happens after we die. Like, yeah. um, but yeah, no, I mean, a lot of like, I own a production company in town. So like, I make films, I do commercials, music videos, things like that. I have a recording studio. Yeah. Uh, so I play a lot of music, things like that. So I'm, you know, that's for me, that's like, after I'm on the road, like, yeah. it's like, all right, I want to create, I want to be artistic. Yeah. Like, even if it's like, I'll paint, like, I'm not a good painter, but I'll paint just yeah. to like, just to get that energy out and just like, do something positive with it. You well, know? Give, give me your, your, who you listening to on iTunes? Like, wh who are your artists? Ah, man, it, it goes all over. I'm an original, like, I'm a 90s grunge kid <laughs> okay. originally. Like, that was like, that's like my heart probably. Mm -hmm. I don't listen to it all the time, but like, that's my, that's my core is yeah. probably like 90s grunge, like Pearl Jam, even Nirvana, Soundgarden, all those guys. Um, so you, it, you know, just chasing goals. You, oh, yeah. you enjoy time to yourself, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's not 100% time oh, yeah. committed to it, so that's good. Exactly. And, and like, it was weird because, like, you know, I've talked to the other guys in the show, and, like, you know, and I feel like there's a reason we all came together, too, like, and just how the fact, I was just the sound guy, but, like, I was into this stuff as I was a kid, and then you grow up, and you kind of, like, real life kicks in. You got to get a job. You got to pay bills. So you kind of lose that connection with the other world, if you will. You know, and then to be able to like it all came back and we we're like, man, this is like some weird meant to be kind yeah. of scenario. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah you guys <laughs> all do what you love. That's I know. It's, it's pretty absolutely. amazing to, you know, always be interested in it. And you know, you get a call to get a gig and now this has became something you're doing for, you know, yeah. thirteen years now. So did you ever think it would get to this point I or never did. <laughs> you know, mm. even now, like I'm still like in shock that I'm like, man, this is keeps going and we just like we keep growing too which is mm -hmm. wild you know like yeah. kind of mentioned our fan base being yeah. so amazing like and they've been with us and they've like followed us like i have friends that would be like man i've been watching you since i was like 12 years old and i'm like <laughs> oh man like cool. it's dating me now but like <laughs> it's awesome like no it's you know, amazing yeah what's the next what's after ghost adventures you think uh, i don't know i mean we're still locked in for a while we have a lot more coming up uh, we have a whole new season that we're starting uh, may 31st uh, which is going to be on actually Discovery Channel. Okay. Uh, we'll still be on the streaming Discovery Plus, but uh, they're moving us up to the the big network, the big which is nice. Okay. Yes. Which is great, you know. Maybe get uh, your own Netflix, yeah. you know, get your worldwide. Right. Yeah. Hopefully, do you ever think y'all, you know, make a movie or? Yeah, yeah. we've talked about it. Like mm -hmm. we did that documentary movie, uh, The Demon House, but we've talked about like doing like a bigger yeah. kind of format. Uh, we always do like a Halloween special every year, which would be like a two-hour special. Yeah. Uh, we've done like mini series where it's like four four hours basically, but kind of around a central theme or something like that. So we're always pushing. And you know what's great about our show too is like I've worked in production, and most of the time like you have producers, you have the network, you have all these people that are like whispering in your ear, do this, say this, do it this way. Yeah. We don't have that at all. Like there's four of us that you see on camera. No. I shoot a camera. Like it's us. Like yeah. we do it. We have full creative control. Um, like for example, like when the pandemic hit a few years ago, and mm -hmm. like we were shut down there, like everybody was. We're like, what are we gonna do? Yeah. So, you know, we were all talking and then Zach ended up pitching to the network. Well, why don't we all live in campers? Like just the four of us, I have all the equipment, you know, we'll live in campers at the Haunted Museum and we'll just do a mini series at the Haunted Museum. Yeah. And they're like, love it, do it. And we had Ghost Adventures Quarantine. <laughs> it was like a four part <laughs> miniseries. 
you know, so it's just like, it's, you know, the network's been amazing to be able to support us like that and give us that freedom to kind of just explore it. And, that's awesome. You know, be able to do what we do. And I think that's part of why, like, it's gone so long too, because like, we still have that creative control. It's not become monotonous or anything like that. And we're always trying new things. We're always, you know, trying to push it. We're trying to bring in new technology. We're always, you know, it's another thing on the off weeks. Like I'm yeah. researching, I'm like, all right, what kind of new equipment is, you know, like we just, one of the guys, uh, Billy just got like a crazy LIDAR system that you can like light, like use lasers to map out an entire location, you know, and we've done it and we've caught like anomalies where like there's yeah. something standing there, but there's nothing there kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's let's talk about the room that we're sitting in. Yeah. Yeah. A couple yeah. of interesting yeah. pieces in here. Um, a lot of things that you said you've collected from places that you've been, and yeah. things that mean things to you and mm -hmm. have yeah. meaning. I've definitely had like a weird collection. Like even like I said as a kid, like I've always been drawn to like weird and unusual. Um, but yeah, there's different things from like locations. Like I think that. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but that 204 sign that was in an old abandoned hospital that went flying off the wall, things like that. Um, you can grab stuff too oh yeah uh just different things there's a there's like a cross stitch over there that was hanging on a wall in iowa when a guy came in and axe murdered a family uh there's rocks that have been thrown that i've seen lift off the ground or i'm just sitting in a location all of a sudden a rock comes flying and hits me out of nowhere <laughs> the cecil hotel picture yeah, here. yeah i got the cecil hotel which was that was a. Uh, I guess a blessing in disguise during COVID, you know, we've been wanting to get in there all the time, but you can't, but like COVID hit, like so many places got shut down that we were finally able to get into them and mm -hmm. investigate. So like Cecil was one, uh, we did the comedy store in LA, which like we've always wanted to go there, heard stories, always wanted to get in there, but they have shows every night. So we mm -hmm. never could, but it's like the first time, hey, we're actually closed. Mm -hmm. So we were able to go in there and do that. Um, but yeah, it's just all different kinds of things, just little things. Uh, there was a bunch of Ouija boards around there, which I don't play anymore because, uh, <laughs> I mean, if there's a situation aroused, I would, but I don't. And uh, mm -hmm. I'll just leave the Ouija boards at the fact. I'll tell one quick story that. Is this why you don't mess with them yeah. anymore? Okay. Well, this was the first time. I've messed with them since, but... This was way before the show. I was a kid, teenager, probably like 17 ish, playing in a band. We had band practice. We're like, after band practice, that's like do the Ouija board. And we're like, <laughs> and we're like kids, and we're like, let's go all out. We're gonna get candles, we're gonna get light incense, have a dish of water, like any ritualistic kind of thing. Like we're kids, we don't know it all. No. Like, but we're like anything that we could find ritualistic, let's just put it all together and do the Ouija board. So then we do that, we're in my parents' basement. We're doing the Ouija board all of a sudden and it starts like saying it's like this kid and it kept saying his name was Z and it would like move around. We're like, OK, it's some little kid named Z. Um, I noticed the incense smoke would blow and it would go down in this like decorative dagger I had. Uh, and I was like, that's weird. So I picked it up and I moved it, put it over this side. The incense would change, go right to the dagger. And I was like, guys, check this out. I started moving the dagger everywhere. I'd move the dagger. The incense would go towards the dagger. So then I'm like, all right, are you attracted to the dagger? And it said, yes. And I was like, okay, all right. And we're like, all right, all right. Yeah. And then I asked the stupidest question I've ever asked my entire life. I said, can you come through the dagger into us? And it said, yes. So we all stop. We're all like, all right, like, you know, like, what are we going to do? Like, but we're like, this is what we want. We like, this was our goal to like get all creeped out and go all out. So we're like, let's do it. You know, so then we stop. My friend and I were both like, all right, we'll both do it. We'll hold the dagger. It was in a sheath. You know, so like we both hold it and we lay on the ground and we're like, okay, like we call it out. Like you can come into us now. Like I get this overwhelming feeling of just sadness, like from my head to my toes. It was like unreal. Like I've never felt anything like it. Like my buddy, he jumps up, gets on top. I'm on my back, right? He gets up on top of me. His knees are here and he's trying to pull the knife out of the sheath. And like you have to press a button, it just breaks and he pushes it towards my throat. And he's on top of me, so I'm holding him like this now. The dagger's like past my throat, like not past my throat, but yeah. past my chin. Yeah. Like literally like in here and I'm shaking, like trying to hold him back as hard as I can because he's up top, so he's all yeah. the, the, the power. All of a sudden he just goes totally limp, full tears, full crying, has no idea what happened, what was going on. And then we're like, all right, I guess we're done for tonight. Like, oh, man, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. So that was uh, that was my first major Ouija board experience. Man, you say first, that would have been my only. Right. <laughs> I don't even know why they sell them in a the store. 
right? Let's look what they're like, in like the toy aisle. Yeah, it's like <laughs> out of all things, why do we have that in the aisle? But in today's world in society, man, you can get into anything or right. search it or because the internet is so open yeah. and wide, but and I'll say too, like a lot of people like with Ouija boards, they're like, oh, like my relative passed away. So they'll try to like talk to them. Like you can't trust it though. Like as much as you want, like yeah. I'd love to say, but like, yeah, have that moment, have that closing, mm -hmm. but it can't like a lot of times, like, yeah. like I thought I was talking to a little kid yeah. and this thing came through and like basically took over my friend and tried to kill me, mm -hmm. which then jump ahead many years on the show, yeah. we were doing a thing and we found out there was this demon that comes through Ouija boards. It's named uh, Z-O, Z-O. And looking back, I was like, oh, it kept saying its name was Z and it would just move around. So it was probably doing like a Z-O, Z-O thing. And then I remember I didn't tell anybody this story at that time. And I go on the Ouija board for the show and I'm doing it with the guy who lived in the house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, have we ever met? And it said, yes. And I was like, what did you try to do to me? And it said, it spelled out kill. And I was like, okay, so this is what I dealt with before. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And since then, like there's been so many times, uh, another real quick story, it was funny. I was at a Waffle House in Tennessee. <laughs> breakfast so, like So random, right? And I'm just there by myself at the bar, just eating some breakfast. There's these two girls like sitting down and I just hear them talking like, and all of a sudden it peaks my ear because they're like, oh yeah, are we gonna do the Ouija board again tonight? And I was like, I was like all right, what are they saying? I'm just eating. Yeah. And I hear them talking and they're like, yeah, like it's so weird. Like it just kept saying its name was Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. And I was just like, stop. <laughs> I was like, oh. And I was like, this sounds crazy. I was like, yeah. you got to stop. Yeah, like, don't, don't even play with that thing. Like. Oh, man. America, we need to get those out of Target. Right. <laughs> Off of Amazon. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's, that's, man, that's, that's crazy. Like, well, you just hear about them stories. It's yeah. just, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's still, it, I, when I say it, I'm, I'm just like, man, like, this is crazy. Like, if this was probably, like, a hundred years ago, I would be locked up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. So, yeah. But, like, this great. We have it on camera. We have yeah. it documented, you know. What's the people that can, like, see dead people? What are Psych called? Psychics. Like, psychics, psychics. or mediums. So, do you, yeah. do you, you, I, do, I don't know, I don't know if they're born with that ability, but is it, you think it's true that, you know, they can actually see I think, dead I people? I think it's a mix. I think, I think, one, I think everybody has the ability. I think everyone, like, we're born with it. Like, mm -hmm. all of us could do it, but I think through, re like, regular life, we kind of lose that connection. Mm -hmm. You know, we're so bombarded with yeah. modern day yeah. life yeah. that we kind of lose that connection with like nature and spirituality, you know, in a way. So I think everyone has it. And I think certain people have like kept on to it and like practice it and keep yeah. pushing it. Um, but then also I think there's people that probably do, they know how to make money from it. And yeah. So it's like psychics, I'm hit or miss. I know a few that we've worked with and mm -hmm. that I know personally that are like, all right, you've said things and you've done things that are like, you're legit. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, you know, but I wouldn't just trust any psychic. Oh, yeah. Like, they got to, you know, they got to prove themselves in a way. Yeah. yeah, crazy abilities like this, how I feel like with some people that do magic or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like people think some of the things they're doing are illusions, but they're really doing them. Right. Yeah. Like, I think some people, like, can well, it's do it's this. Well, it's like intu stuff. intuition. Like, how many times, like, you know, just like you've been in a situation, you're like, man, I thought that I kind of had a feeling like that was going to happen. And then it does. Or, yeah something like that you know and even like uh you know like manifestation like yeah. like willing and like focusing yeah. like you know like i don't know like what you do and you know when you're playing football but yeah. like i imagine there's a lot of that like you're visualizing getting in there and doing things and like that's like an, its own form of magic in a way you know yeah it, it's, it's pretty strange growing up obviously you know everybody's dream is to you know play in the nfl but growing up i always used to have like these moments or these dreams where either i'm playing football or Say like um, you know, I bought my dream house and I'm in my dream, mm -hmm. and you know, it's going into my eleventh year. But I think about it and I have dreams that actually happen. Yeah. And it kind of freaks me out. I was yeah. like, bro, I actually dreamed about this like not so long ago, and now it's mm -hmm. actually happened. So yeah, we do have some type. Yeah. Of, like deja vu. Yeah. yeah. That, I think that's the that's thing. The worst. You know, and a lot of people <laughs> look at people you know that are like, oh man, like I live in a terrible place. I'm never gonna get anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's gonna and chant like they're not yeah you know, like they have that like thought pattern of like nothing good's ever going to happen and unfortunately nothing good's really going to happen like thinking that way yeah so you being from philly mm -hmm. me being a sports guy football guy yeah it's safe to say you're not a phillies fan right because i play the cowboys oh i didn't want to bring it up <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I got I got to stick with the Eagles, man. <laughs> got to fly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not I don't, I'm not going to say they're good. I mean, they're I mean, they're, they they've, they've had, they've had good Bowl. times. Yeah. yeah I mean, so, but like, I feel like Philly's well. one of those teams where it's like, especially like in Philly, like, mm-hmm. yeah. like we love them and like we can make fun of them. We yeah. can say like, oh, they're terrible. They Don't suck. Else but if anyone nothing. else says it, like, nah. Yeah. But, but yeah, Dallas has always been the, you know, like the main yeah. main enemy, if you will. But it's all good. I love it. <laughs> so do do you watch sports often? You know? Yeah, I mean, like I'm not like into. I think I just travel and busy too mm-hmm. much to kind of get into it. But like, yeah. but like I always enjoy it when I do. You know, like I don't follow it. I would say, but like I enjoy watching it. I enjoy going to games. Like. Yeah. You know, I, I grew up playing sports as a kid and, okay. you know, never got to play football. That was, you know, a little too intense <laughs> for my parents liking. But but then they would have me play ice hockey and get yeah, beat up just and checked and all kinds of stuff. But Maybe more dangerous. Right? Than, yeah. Football. yeah. And now I hunt ghosts and I still get, like, broken things and sprained ankles yeah. and all kinds of stuff. Can you explain <laughs> a little bit how it happened when I was giving? Yeah, I mean, so it was a recent investigation. Uh, I was by myself kind of in the woods and I had an experience where something came out Mm -hmm. and I ran out and unfortunately when you're running around in the dark you're going to hit stuff Mm -hmm. and I ran out and hit a tree dropped on the ground (laughs) that was more in my shoulder Uh, and then as I'm on the ground I look over and I just see some kind of dark like mass it didn't have form it was just like this Mm -hmm. floating dark coming out from this path where I was at and I was like oh no I was like no I was like I'm just getting out of here and I started to run and I felt something just like toss me around in the woods. And then after that, my knee was hurting, my ankle was hurting. Like it was just, it was all messed up. And then, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, I was just kind of mundanely just putting equipment away and stuff. And then it just stepped down, it totally dislocated. So I think it definitely was from like, it was weakened and beat up and then it finally just gave out. Man. <laughs> That first part when you were explaining what happened, I, I couldn't help but think of uh, Pineapple Express when they got stuck <laughs> in the woods and they ran and <laughs> Oh, oh man, that's I feel like crazy. you could definitely do a highlight reel of like <laughs> times I've fallen. Man. There's another spot in Seguin, Texas. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, I was coming out of a basement and like it was like the storm cellar doors mm-hmm. and it was raining. I pushed it open, I slipped on the stairs, and it's all on camera. I drop to my knees, the door comes flying down, my hand and my head bust through the oh. door. <laughs> oh. So it got played over and over oh, again on replay. Your and that, that <laughs> Man, oh, yeah. that's, that's funny. Man, that's I'm funny. like, I'm just, I just can't believe some of the stories, and now that I think about the shows and scary movies I watch, it could really all be true. Yeah, I mean, like you said, man, a lot of the movies that we watch, the script, the script and all that stuff, I mean, it, it, it's got to come from somewhere. I mean, yeah. most of it, some of it's made up, obviously, but yeah, they're definitely telling stories of things that's happened. <laughs> and then it's the, the, to talk to you about the things that you've seen and you go out and search these things for real. It's not, you know, a, a production, right. but so, I mean, you know, a set up production, but... Right. Yeah, that's it's it's pretty intense, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah it's absolutely. Pretty when something there's nothing there and it grabs you and pulls yeah. you backwards, like that's and then like that's you a whole have other level. And then like you have to try to explain to people who really just don't believe that stuff's yeah. happening. Exactly, there's and always like, gonna be, and I get that too. Like yeah. you know, and I still like all of us. We still approach everything skeptically. We're not just gonna be like, oh, it's haunted instantly. Like we're gonna try to like right. prove it, you know. But like another hard part too is like something will happen, and then you have to like articulate it to the camera too because we are trying to tell the story and the experience and i remember i was in a, a, a crawl space in prescott arizona under an old saloon mm-hmm. and i'm crawling around like on my elbows and they basically they said like some kind of evil demon thing like comes out of there mm-hmm. like that's where it's based out of so i'm in there by myself crawling around you know like about that much room like and i'm a pretty big guy like i there's you know i'm in there nothing's happening so i start antagonizing calling it out I'm like you're this big bad spirit like you know scaring all the employees here like do something then i have a camera like this something grabs my leg i start kicking it grabs my leg and i get dragged backwards i drop the camera and you can see there's nothing behind me and i actually get dragged backwards away from the camera and 
I lose it. Like I'm yeah. screaming, I'm yelling, there's dust flying, but I can't just get up and run because I'm in a crawl space. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm freaking out. And then my buddy comes running to the entrance. I see his light like way over in the distance. I just start crawling as fast as I can over. I get out and then first thing, camera in your face, like what just happened? And I'm like, oh, come on, <laughs> man. Just, yeah. like, just stop, uh, hold on. Like I just, man. I'm still trying to figure out what just happened, you know? <laughs> well, you know, football investigations require, you know, st strategic planning. Mm -hmm. How do you um, you plan before going into like a haunted location? Yeah, I think a lot of it's, uh, we do a lot of research in the history. So I think knowing kind of what happened there mm -hmm. uh, helps because sometimes we'll get names that come through different devices, things like that. And like, we want to be able to line it up and be like, oh, like we're actually talking to the old owner or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, so a lot of research, a lot of history. Yeah. Um, and then also like once we're there and we kind of start our initial investigation, which is mostly just interviews with people's experiences, things like that. And once we kind of get that in, uh, the, uh, the guys and I like, we'll kind of sit down and we'll kind of talk about like ideas like, okay, we should focus on this more. We should focus on this part. Uh, or like, oh, this like, special experiment would be great for this kind of thing because the way it's set up and that's like where like the creativity and like being able to do whatever we want every episode like we can change it up and like you know try totally different things it doesn't have to be the same all the time you know and the thing is too it's edited so like sometimes we'll do things and it doesn't work and you yeah. don't see it you know it's almost like fishing sometimes like yeah no you gotta <laughs> sometimes the good stuff happens sometimes you gotta you know plan for it to happen right. um you know, we're having a big fan base. Obviously, the NFL have a huge fan base. How do you interact with, you know, the fans and the community? Yeah. I mean, social media, I try to be present. I mean, sometimes it's tough and, like, yeah. everyone kind of wants a message. And if you message one and you don't know, and then, like, yeah, it's hard. I feel like sometimes <laughs> I step away. But, like, I try to at least, like, I try to at least, like, police my social media. So, like, get rid of negative comments, get rid of the trolls, yeah. things like that. The fakes. There's a lot of fakes that pop in. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, without them, like, it's great, too. Like, they'll send us locations. They'll be like, oh, have you ever heard of this yeah. place or that place? So, like, we get a lot of cool locations that way, you know. And I will say, I got to give it to you, too. I did hear a statistic yeah. that our show was the number one show between men on a certain demographic in yeah. our time spot. Except for sports and news, so oh, yeah. you guys, yeah. you guys, you guys still beat us there. So you've been doing it for 13 years. You gotta have some type of wide audience and a big fan base. Yeah. But man, that's that's pretty cool. It's so interesting, man. I would like to, I would like to go on one with them. You know, maybe a, a happy ghost. Right. Yeah. You know, Find a good spot. I ain't got understand. time to be elevating or seeing a rock elevate. I really want. I'll probably shit myself. <laughs> like, you gotta keep some diapers in the kit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have like a samurai sword while I'm going to this place. Right. But um, it, it's crazy because a lot of it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. A lot of it, you know, when you are, are in it, like you said, you feel like you're the only one in there, but you came in there with a group of people. But right. what you're realizing, what you're seeing is not what they're seeing so man spirits are real man ghosts are real you know for having this, this discussion these talks um do you have any stories about paranormal activity happening to you um, so my first house in uh detroit off the east side um i grew up it was you know like a four-story house mm -hmm. and um like i was kind of telling you earlier um my my room was right next to the attic and um you know, growing up was me and my brother sharing rooms and we had a, a double bed and my bed was on, you know, the top one close to the ceiling. And, you know, there'd be times I know, you know, you watch a scary movie, you think you're hearing something, you know, the attic's up there. I'm like, ah, it's probably nothing. And then it started happening quite often. And I'm looking like, I'm trying to tell my mom and my dad, like, it's got to be something upstairs in the attic. You know, me being eight, seven, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. 10 years old, you really just don't know what could be out there or what it is. But... I forced my mom to get me out of there and I just can't handle it. But I, I felt better with something up there, even though I couldn't see it or, you know. What's well, the thing too, a lot of it's not just sounds or like things like that. It's like, it's that, there's a feeling that you get too, where like, you almost like, you know, if you're in a room and it's dark and someone else walks in that room, you can yeah. almost be like, there's someone else in here. Yeah. Like when you get that and you yeah. know there's no one else around, it's yeah. wild. Like we've been in locations where we're straight up like, all right, there's gotta be somebody in here. Yeah. Like, especially like a big abandoned building. We're like, all right, maybe there's a homeless person snuck in here or yeah. something. Cause it's like, there's, there's, it's so real. Like yeah. there's somebody in here, like, but then we'll search the whole place and there's nobody. Yeah. <laughs> like the building has been there for so long. Sometimes you gotta feel something. Another quick story. Can't think of the team 
or which stadium it is. But every time I go in there, it just feels like, it just feels weird. No, no, I'm not sure if yeah. it's just the atmosphere of the team, right. but. Yeah. Well, if you remember, <laughs> we, we should investigate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that'll be your guys' investigation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Make that'll a special good. podcast investigation. And a, a, a horror story stadium. Right. Could be oh, that hey, so there could be to, something in them stadiums. Could be, could, be, could be your Halloween special. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> I might have to take the podcast on to you know a Halloween thing, and Tim, you got to come, Timmy. You got to come too since you're here. So you're already locked in. Alex, you're coming too. Everybody's right. going. It'll be there. whatever team has the worst, <laughs> the, the worst season will be their their horror story. <laughs> Football players wrapped up in mummy gear. Well, you do this for real life every single day. You deal in it. What would you say your favorite scary movie is? Uh, I've liked, I think overall, I always loved The Shining. Oh, yeah. Like just something about the psychological yes. horror. Yes. Like, like, don't get me wrong, like I love like slasher movies, things like that. But like, you look at that, you're like, all right, that's blatantly fake. But like the psychological yeah. horror stuff, that's you're like, okay, that. Yeah. That feels more real to me. Like that's more realistic to like, and even what I've seen with people being possessed and affected, yeah. like, so that's probably like one of my classic go-tos. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. What, what about for you, Hank? Oh, what was the, what was the question? scary movie. Scary. Oh, man, I got so many. My it had to be uh, Jason, because mm. you know he's just invincible, and it's like the guy never dies. Right. You know what I mean? And it just, and then the music. I think it's the music for me that really gets me going, get my heart rate going. Because when it stops, it's like something's about to happen. Yeah. There's sometimes something, nothing ever happens. Yeah, but yeah. when it do happen, it's like, oh! <laughs> but that's what I live for. That's what I like watching when I watch scary Absolutely. movies. Absolutely. You know, my yeah. lady can't cheese. The sound does scary it. scary movies. But <laughs> yeah. If you watch it on mute, it's not going to have the same No, effect. I think I had the same effect. <laughs> well, that, man. Freddy for me, man, because you can't even go to sleep with Freddy. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, really screwed. Yeah. You can't get away from that. <laughs> but what I've learned is, because you know, I used to torture myself by watching and falling asleep. Mm. So my mind was like, well, if you watch a scary movie, how about you watch cartoons after? So it yeah. kind of ease your mind, yeah. ease your brain, because yeah. it'd be days where I had these nightmares where I'm running, trying to run from Jason, and next you know, for some reason, it always ended up ending me. Um, jumping out of a window. Right. Because I can't like stay in face. Like right. I ain't about to get stabbed even though I know it's a dream. I am not trying to get stabbed. <laughs> but then there be times where you're trying to run away and then you just feel like you can't run straight. It's like, yeah. why is this happening? Like I should be able to run, but you know, it's a dream. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> yeah, that's why I tell people too. Like I'll get like things from fans that are like, and one of the cool things too is like they'll be like, oh, it's like your show's like our family. Like we all watch it together. Mm -hmm. It's like one of those things. Or like we watch you every night before we go to bed. I'm like, what? Like <laughs> nah. I was like, I hope you're watching cartoons afterwards or yeah. something. But <laughs> you need that, that palate refresh. Was that one of your like recipes to like ease your mind when you first got started with it? Yeah, I think it would be. Like and honestly, we still do it today. Like, yeah. like. You know, it's funny because like you'll see the four of us on the show and like, you know, but then again, like I think our naturalness comes out because we are just who we are. But like we are so goofy. We're so mm -hmm. weird. We joke like probably 90 percent of the time. Yeah. Like, you know, we laugh, but it's because of that. Like yeah. we deal with so much dark, serious things yeah. that we're like we almost have to like counteract it by like laughing and joking and trying to have a good time and yeah. messing with each other and playing, you know, like. You know, and I think that's yeah. why it's like, you know, there's times where like I get terrified and I start laughing, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like I've had people like, why, why are you laughing? Like, it was just scary. And I'm like, it's I, I don't know. It's just yeah. a natural yeah. reaction. It's better like, to yeah. laugh about it than, yeah. Yeah, than to cry about it. I right. guess. I'm scared I mean, to get up out of there. This, exactly. This is a job yeah. you got to do. <laughs> right. Man. So you guys both travel a lot uh, doing what you guys do. Where are some places that you like to travel or what are the kind of like travel arrangements look like when you guys take the road? Uh, well, for me. My lady does all the planning and the traveling, um, but I done, I done been, you know, I done been to Italy, I done been to, you know, all the Caribbean islands. Uh, traveling, it's cool. I won't say I, you know, obviously for a lot of people, when you're traveling a lot, sometimes it could be, a, you know, a house would be stress-free mm -hmm. or be stressful, but um, I actually enjoy flying and traveling and going places and seeing new things, but uh, now, I don't, we got the ghost adventures, I think. 
all the fun traveling is almost mm -hmm. i feel like i done done it all yeah. so i think it's time to step over to you know maybe the, some of this the trip, dark right? side <laughs> you know just get a few of those experiences yeah. but um you know that's traveling what, for me is pretty yeah normal. that's what i always like too about especially traveling with the show is that like we go to places you wouldn't normally go yeah. like you were saying like oh i've been in the caribbean yeah. well i mean in fairness we've done jamaica but like okay. you know like you know, like we go to like middle of nowhere towns. Like that's not yeah. a place where I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go check that out. Yeah, so it's right. cool to be able to like travel so much and see places that like I would never go to. I've never even heard of. Like I didn't know, but like there's not always a lot there, but like there's just so much character and culture and, and even in America. Like, and I think in traveling is important for people. I think like if you don't get to travel, mm -hmm. like you can get locked in your mindset. Yeah, you get like, stuck. It's a whole world out yeah. there. And I think it's important to be able to experience that. And once you start doing that, it's like, oh, man. man, there's so much out there. I'm it's, on my it's way, amazing. I'm on my way. Who's trying to get my man's passport so he can see the world? I got a date locked down to get my passport. Okay, good. So. good. And soon flying, like flying, I love flying because that's like the one time where like no one can bother me. I mean, now like <laughs> in fairness, like, like every airline has Wi-Fi now and stuff, mm -hmm. but like, for a while, it was like, I'm on a plane, Peaceful. like, yeah. I'm checking out, I'm on a plane, yeah. can't talk to me for at least three hours, like, <laughs> you know, and it's just headphones in, just book or whatever, and just zone out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, they saw that. For some reason, you can text people while they're in the air, yeah. and I ain't gonna lie, it's been one time where someone FaceTimed me, and I was able to oh, actually wow. FaceTime them and speak to them a little bit, but, right. you know, that just shows you how far technology right. has gotten. <laughs> And where we are today, but um, yeah. yeah, I've done the texting a few times. Once when I thought it was, I thought we were going down. I was starting to be like, oh, man, no. just in case, like it was, it was a scary one. But was that scarier than any uh, ghost adventure you've ever been on? It's comparable for sure, yeah, it but is. it was like it was like two hours straight of just being tossed, oh, and man. I think we like ended up like watching the news, and like we flew through like twenty tornadoes or something that just like randomly popped up. Even the pilot came on, and was like. I have no idea what that was. He's like, we have devices that show the, the uh, clear path. And I was like, we did it. But like, they just came out of nowhere. And wow. I know when you think about it, you know, me being a professional athlete, we literally fly every other weekend. Yeah. And not all the flights I didn't took in my life, I probably had about, I say six bad flights yeah. to the point where it was so bumpy. Like, yeah, I got down right. on my knees and I was like, <laughs> right, please like, don't right. let this be the day. Just, just please don't mm -hmm. let this be the day. I can't go out like this. You know what I mean? Right. But, you know, you know you, <laughs> like we fly. <laughs> we fly probably like 10 times, you know, a season. And um, obviously not every flight is going to just be yeah. nice. Well, I guess, too, when you guys so, go somewhere, you have a quick turnaround, too, right? Yeah, You're not well, like you don't have like time to really like nope. check out the place or anything. No. That's we, the one thing I try to like because we pretty quick. Like we usually will get like maybe one day off. So mm -hmm. like at least I get that to kind of we can go out and explore a little bit. But yeah, yeah that's got to be a tease, though, to be like going places. And yeah, like, it's cool. It's yeah. nice. We, we if we're going like somewhere that's further than four hours, we usually go like two days in advance so we can kind of adjust to the time rather than just flying there, showing up and play like college. But um, mm. I love it. If it weren't for football, I wouldn't be able to go to all the places and, right. you know, see some of these experiences. But um, it's amazing, man. Right. It's amazing. It is, man. Well, that was a, a podcast for y'all, for all the uh, ghost hunters, ghost adventure people, you know, Please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to officially become a ghost hunter <laughs> and add it to the family with y'all. Right. Um, I appreciate you taking yeah, the time. Yeah, it's great. It was, yeah, it was fun, fun talking to you. Uh, yeah. Very uh, interesting, some yeah. of the things. Let me know if any of my friends come come back with you. And I'll... <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're going to leave all your friends so here. <laughs> Everyone that comes over gets a free parting gift. <laughs> I'll hold that, I'll hold that. <laughs> no, but, you're um, good. I, I make this it's safe space. Yeah. You know, I always, there's a weird, creepy stuff, but I, mm -hmm. I do everything I can to make it, you know. Keep it home. You know? Exactly. I mean, you gotta have somewhere where you can yeah. just take a breath and wind down yeah. and relax. So. Exactly, that's what the rest of the house is more zen yeah. and chill, but I was like, I'm gonna give, give them a room so they're happy at least. Yeah, no, that's cool. <laughs> but I, I do gotta take you up on one of your trips. So if you ever go somewhere close by or, I'll go, but right. it, it just can't be. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna let. It. I'm, I'm gonna just like, let let the experience happen. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. and I'll see if Master would like to go. Right, <laughs> soon to be wife. So oh, yeah, um, yeah, maybe we'll do events or something, mm -hmm. something a little easier, low key to start yeah. with. Yeah. <laughs>
We could probably start off on Halloween, go to a haunted house. Let's break the ground with that. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we even uh, you should go check out the museum in Vegas. Uh, yeah, Zach's, we got to do Zach's that. haunted museum. That place is wild. I've spent so much time in there, and that place is legitimately probably one of the most haunted places because it's like, it's such the, it's probably the largest collection of mm-hmm. haunted Actually. objects, too. And you feel it. Like, you yeah. walk through, and it's like, You've, and it's all different feelings. Like there's yeah. good and bad. And are you able to like record it going there? Uh, he or? has packages where like just the regular tour you're not allowed. Mm-hmm. You can't do photos. But there's a they call it the instead of VIP like the RIP tour, mm-hmm. and that oh. one. Uh, and they do like a flashlight night tour. I think yeah. thing where you can like you can do like your own little mini investigations now. Yeah. 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 We had to take it up. We got to do one. Yeah, Alex, she's doing, yeah, she's right. since she's into this, yeah, she, she it's loves definitely this. worth checking out. Even just yeah. the history, the objects. There's so many amazing things in there. Well, that's cool, man. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we have a whole new season that's starting. It's exciting too because we're moving to Discovery Channel. Yeah. We were on Travel, but now we're going to Discovery. Uh, we're going to be on Wednesday nights starting mm-hmm. May thirty first. Uh, and May 31st, too, we kick it off with a two-hour special okay. uh, called Ghost Adventures: Lake of Death, Ooh. where we actually investigated Lake Mead. Oh, uh, was, got all the stories of the barrels yeah. popping up. We were like, wow. man, like as soon as we started hearing that, we're like, we got to try to figure this out. Man. And it's wild. Like yeah. there's just the evidence we captured. Like, like still, like we I filmed it a while ago. You know, it's finally coming out. But like yeah. we're still talking about some of the evidence we got. It's wild. You know, I heard a lot of stories <laughs> about that during the time when the, it was losing water, and mm. it, it could be some ghost stories in there. And I, I know they were talking about. It's got to be some mafia people because this is what Las Vegas was based out of. So I'm going to tune in for sure for that. Right, I can't wait. Well, as my fans, Ghost Adventure fans, you know, please, you know, comment below, subscribe to both of the channels. Love to support y'all. Been showing us and um, we'll continue to roll these things out. Man. Yeah, we appreciate it. And thanks for being yeah. on and teaching us what yeah. we didn't know. Absolutely. <laughs> and hopefully the skeptics out there are right. kind of more yeah. interested and they'll tune in and yeah, find absolutely. out. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thanks guys. All right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>